So let me, let me give you yes. an example, an A-list example. Do you know who has not appeared in a major movie in over a decade? Uh, Christopher Reeve. <laughs> okay, true. I, I, you got me there. Well, I was on uh, the uh, Superman. Uh, all right. So, so, so that true. I can't blame Hollywood bias. but I, I still yeah. do. <laughs> Richard Gere. Oh, Richard mm-hmm. Gere. Oh. Richard Gere, because he spoke out for Tibet. Oh, Tibet. He took on China. So I right. actually had a chance to meet Richard Gere. He came to, to the Senate and, and was speaking out against Chinese oppression. And go back and look. And, you know, he was in a ton of movies as an officer and a never, gentleman. Every movie. And, I mean, he was an A-list, yeah. like, you know, major star. And go, go pull up his list of films in a decade no major studio will hire him because he's dared criticize communist China, and it doesn't matter if you're Richard Gere, you're done. You're doing small independent films because we're distributing to China and we want to make a buck. That very, China, very that China interesting. Issue, it kind of shows it to me, too, because it, it is just about that buck. And, you know, we, we talk a lot on the show about, like, the oppression, the systems of the institutional oppression that the left is always prattling on about. But the left controls all of those institutions, right? The media, Hollywood, big tech, administrative government, all, the, all these sorts of things. And so it, it does seem to me at this point, if even Richard Gere can be effectively canceled because he speaks out against the Communist Party of China, you kind of just have to build the pirate ship, don't you? You kind of have to yeah. do exactly well, what you did. Look, for people who never stop talking about paying your fair share and blah, blah, blah. Ten years ago, I was doing a show in Winnipeg, of all places, and it was the middle of the winter and no one should go to Winnipeg in the middle of the winter. But anyway, <laughs> I was getting walked to my room and the guy who was walking to my room in the hotel said, you know, is it the room in the, the end, the, the suite at the end? And I said, who? And he said, Samuel L. Jackson. And I said, why? And he said, because he's shooting a movie out here. And I thought, where's the movie supposed to take place? I was like, it's supposed to take place in Chicago. He's a cop. It's winter time. It's a, they're trading out Winnipeg for Chicago. Samuel L. Jackson is one of the biggest voices of pay your fair share and pay your tax. He lives in Beverly Hills. Who's the first guy to hop on a plane and go to Winnipeg and shoot a movie to save a couple of dollars in taxes and credits? Samuel L. Jackson. So the group who talks the most about doing the right thing and what's wrong with paying more and blah, 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 the first people to hop on a plane. I drove Brian Cranston to the Burbank airport from this studio because he's shooting Breaking Bad in New Mexico. He's a very liberal guy. He's all for, you know, raise the taxes and blah, blah, blah. But he's also, I'm also giving him a ride to New Mexico to shoot four or five seasons of Breaking Bad. That's that's how people work. 